This video is sponsored by KiwiCo. This is a real, functional, jet-propelled personal hovercraft, and if you've played any of the Halo games, you'll also immediately recognize it as the Covenant Ghost. It's always been my favorite fictional vehicle, so I just spent the last three months building it in real life. And this is the result. Okay, I haven't been completely honest with you. The sound in that last clip was replaced. And that's because although this might hover and drive and boost and look like a real ghost, it really doesn't sound like it. It actually sounds like this. If you think it kind of sounds like a furious lawnmower, well, that's basically right because it uses the engine from one. Ghosts are meant to hover using an anti-gravity drive, but I didn't really feel like developing one, so instead I used a four-stroke mower engine to power a big fan, which shoves a ton of air through this duct and into the skirt and under the vehicle. I made the skirt from transparent PVC to get it to look a bit floatier, but I know it still doesn't quite compare to the anti-gravity drive. For thrust, I'm using two small jet engines attached under the wings, similar to the blue jets in the games. I'm sure I'm not the first person to try powering a hovercraft with jet engines, but then I couldn't find anything legit about it on the internet, so maybe I am. The jet engines are so loud they basically drown out the lawnmower engine, and they burn through fuel at a frankly ludicrous rate. You really don't want to be behind these, so I oriented them slightly outwards from the driver. This only reduced the forward thrust by about 10%, and it made the vehicle's turning much more sensitive, which I thought was a wonderful idea, but, well... We'll get back to that shortly. One of my favorite parts of the whole build is the dashboard. There's nothing special about it, I just think it's cool. It's got the fuel and telemetry modules for each of the turbines, along with a tachometer, throttle, choke, and fuel cutoff for the lift fan engine. And there used to be a kill switch as well, except it started killing even when it wasn't switched, so that had to go. The best part though is the keyed ignition. If the Covenant had thought of that, maybe the Master Chief wouldn't keep stealing their ghosts. Of course, on the first test, I forgot the keys and then had to hotwire the ghost to get it running. And then we soon found out we had a fuel leak. Oh, God. I don't know why that was happening. I forgot to hook up one line like an idiot. Then after fixing that, it seemed to work, but only at reduced power. So we took a bit of a pit stop and found that the dirt road on the drive here had actually vibrated the fan's shaft connection loose. And this whole time, the engine was trying to chop itself to pieces using the metal fan hub. Thankfully it didn't manage to, but boy did the performance increase when we fixed that up. I should mention, my mate Dan helped me out a lot from the building onwards, and we were also given a hand with testing by another friend, Justin, and by Julian, whose farm we tested this on, and who got up at 4am to help us shoot at sunrise. So we gave Julian a short ride on the ghost as a bit of a thank you. A big part of getting the hovering to work is balancing out the lifting force with the weight, and so to achieve this I printed out a reference model on a Halot 1 resin printer that Creality kindly gave me, and then I used SolidWorks to design the whole thing from scratch, in a way that looked like the game model but was more mechanically feasible. On top of the weight distribution, I also had to design the whole structure to be as light and rigid as possible, so using a vacuum cleaner and the incredible mass of the Earth's atmosphere to press everything together, the deck was made from a composite of marine ply and aluminium, with polystyrene in between, which in industry is literally called a foam sandwich. Finally, the whole top frame is made from welded aluminium tube. The construction for that ended up being a massive task, and unfortunately, while I was welding it up, I accidentally dropped the welding torch on my leg, and somehow the blunt tip of the tungsten was apparently hot enough to cut my knee nearly down to the bone. The doctor who stitched it up needed to check the ligament wasn't damaged, so he asked me to move my leg, and then when I did, he was like, oh good, yeah, I can see the ligament moving back and forth there, so you're fine. <laughs> so that was uh, good. It made walking difficult for a few days, but I was on a timeline, so I kept welding until I had the frame done. It is 3.30 a.m. and today has been my sixth 18 hour day of cutting and bending and welding and all the frame stuff, but it's done. So I'm gonna get some bed, some sleep at, in bed, yeah. After the frame was done, I moved on to the all aluminium paneling. Unfortunately, I didn't have the time, tools, or skill to make the front and back panelling properly curved like it is in the game, but I think this dragon scale effect worked pretty well as the next best thing. Since they were aluminium, I really wanted to get the panels anodized to get that bright purple colour you can get using that process. 
but unfortunately the only South African anodizer I found who could do large pieces only did grey and amber. And although it would be cool having my ghost in amber clad, I ended up just spray painting it purple. It's not perfect, but I'm pretty darn happy with the way it all ended up looking. My fifth grader self would have been so pleased, and not just because I liked Halo, but also because a hovercraft was actually the first big thing I ever built. This is my hovercraft that um, I made of plans from the internet. <laughs> This is why it's called a hovercraft, because when that inflates, it comes out here and makes it hover. By the way, it's actually super easy to make this kind of hovercraft if you've got a leaf blower. Let me explain how while I tell you about this video's sponsor, KiwiCo. Step one is to cut a plywood circle with a hole for your blower. KiwiCo offers educational kits like this DIY headphones one that help to teach kids creative problem solving and STEAM principles. Step two is to cut a bigger circle out of any of these kinds of materials and staple around it with some kind of slack underneath. Nine subscription lines are offered for different ages and they can ship to more than 40 countries. Step three is to bolt a plastic or plywood disc here in the center and cut holes around that. These crates could be an awesome holiday gift for yourself or others that you can build instead of just buying. And I can tell you, Grade 5 JT would have loved getting this as a present. Step four is duct tape the blower in place and enjoy your hovercraft. So if you're now keen on KiwiCo, please consider using my link in the description, kiwico.com slash builtirl to get 50% off your first month of any crate. So throughout all the testing, the Ghost performed pretty great. A lot of the things I was worried about ended up working out perfectly. There was just one small issue though. Well gents, that is very difficult to maneuver. Yeah, you know how earlier I said I was happy for the extra steering sensitivity? Well, it ended up being absolutely horrific. Combined with the three to five second delay and the jets ramping up and down, it was constantly a struggle to avoid just doing donuts everywhere. I did get a couple of straight runs in though, including this unfortunate one where Julian's puppy left the car and tried to chase after the ghost. Thankfully it wasn't hurt, although I don't know how the dog was. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, the puppy was fine, but the ghost did actually crash and it got a small tear in the skirt. It's a very easy fix for next time though, so see you then.